Welcome into another quick hitter episode of the OG podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Um, and I want to do uh, some you know rapid fire news, uh, just a blockbuster mob hit uh, that went down to Montreal today, um, uh, Monday, uh, June 5th, 2023. A longtime uh, Rizzuto crime family enforcer, Francesco Chit Del Basso. Uh, was killed leaving his um, workout, his uh, late morning workout at the Monster Gym in West Island uh, section of, of Montreal. And uh, he was running for his life these last couple months. Uh, he, you know, the old saying is if, if you take a shot at the king, uh, you better not miss. And, and Chit, he missed uh, back in the spring. Del Basso uh, made a play, uh, a move to try to take out Rizzuto crime family Don, or alleged Don, uh, Leonardo uh, Rizzuto, and um, he failed. Uh, Rizzuto uh, averted assassination in a, in a drive-by on the expressway and uh, was shot in the leg, but uh, wasn't killed. Uh, Del Basso tried to leave the country, and, and uh, that was on March 16th. Uh, two weeks later, on March 30th, Del Basso tried to leave the country, and he was intercepted by uh, authorities there and the RCMP. They confiscated his passport and uh, told him he was the, the target of an investigation. He was already out on bond on an extortion case from 2022, where he was um, accused of extorting his priest. That's what a uh, kind of diabolical hellion um roughneck that this guy was and uh just a very very notorious mob muscle uh, mob enforcer collector uh, a guy that you did not want to see coming down the street calling your name was uh, caught on a wire back in the 2000s telling a guy that uh, i'm the guy that's going to make you uh, drink from a straw uh for the next year uh, he, he told another guy that he was going to twist him up like a pretzel. Um, a guy that worked very close with Vito Rizzuto and then tried to kill Vito Rizzuto's son. So what I think is most interesting about this, obviously it's um, it's jumping to the forefront of this great Canadian mafia war that we've been, we're going on decade number two with this thing and, and the, the body count's already probably in the triple digits. Del Basso is the most uh, high profile name to um, bite the dust in, in, in a few years. But a couple a couple weeks ago, you had the murder, the first murder, uh, intentional murder of a female, uh, a mob wife in, in Montreal, the, the daughter-in-law of, of one of Vito Rizzuto's allies turned rivals, uh, Moreno Gallo. Uh, his daughter-in-law, Claudia Iacono, uh, was murdered. She owned a spa. Her her husband was Antonio Gallo, uh, and then now a couple of weeks later, Chit Del Basso. So it, it's it's really ramping up instead of tamping down. Um, it all started back in the 2000s when Vito Rizzuto went to prison, and then went into high gear when Rizzuto was extradited to the United States uh, and served about three or four years in a U.S. prison for his role in the Three Capos slaying that was uh, depicted in the movie Donnie Brasco. Uh, but by the time he came back, his his family was in was in shambles. Leonardo Rizzuto, who's who's taken over for his dad, his dad died of an aggressive form of cancer allegedly uh, back in 2013. Uh, eventually, the the crown went to Leonardo Rizzuto, who is you know the real life Michael Corleone in terms of the Canadian mafia. This is a guy that uh, grew up in a mafia empire, but was never tapped to be a future leader was known as a you know non-gangster type as opposed to his brother who i guess you could um, analogize to sonny corleone if he was michael uh nicky rizzuto uh ritzy nick you know he was the guy that was going to be his father's successor um but he was murdered uh vito rizzuto's dad uh zio nicolo uncle uh, uncle Nick uh, was murdered, brother-in-law murdered, and uh, eventually Leonardo Rizzuto, who was an attorney, has had to kind of step up and enter the 
enter the underworld as, as a Don when, you know, he never intended on, on doing that, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but, you know, we're not, uh, it's, it's presumptuous, I guess, in, in some regards legally to say that uh, Del Basso's murder um, came from the Rizzuto camp, but if you're just going to connect the dots, uh, it, you know, conventional wisdom says that this was revenge for Del Basso trying to kill Rizzuto back in March. So, you know, another underlying plot here that I think needs to be focused on and, and, and contextualized is that Del Basso wasn't acting alone per se. He, he had received the, the support and backing of the Hells Angels, who, who at one point been, you know, fierce, loyal Rizzuto allies. And according to reporting in across the border in, in, in Canada right now, and some of my sources, uh, Martin Robert, who's the most powerful biker boss in Quebec, they call him Marty the Capo or, or Captain, uh, he's about 48, 49 years old, and uh, he's got the power right now in the Hells Angels. And it looks like he made the wrong call on who to back in, in this, this dispute, at least right now, you know, after, you know, in the hours after Del Basso was, was gunned down. Um, and it should be interesting to see what the fallout is and how this affects the Hells Angels, who are in the midst of quite a bit of chaotic activity here in the United States. They're kind of under siege more than normal. Uh, we've talked about it on the pod as well as on, on gangsterreport.com, where the pagans blew wave. The pagans, a uh, long time. East Coast, Southeast centered club. Uh, and back in about five years ago, launched an expansion ca campaign known as the Blue Wave. And now they're going in uh, across the country into a lot of locales uh, that had been previously dominated by the Hells Angels. And we're, we're getting quite a bit of uh, quite a few flare ups. And there are report, you know, underworld sourcing telling us over the last six months the impossible might be happening, that the Hells Angels and the outlaws, uh, their bitter rivals, um, might be secretly either calling a, a, a uh, an end to their 50-year war or at least a temporary truce ceasefire to join forces and, and uh, oppose this pagan's blue wave, kind of like your enemy's enemy becomes your friend. I don't know how that's going to affect things that are going on in Canada, Marty Robert is has become or is was a rising star uh, is now kind of the boss of bosses in, in that area. His marriage, his wedding five years ago, around the same time that this Blue Way was be, was being launched in 2018, he got married to the daughter of a pretty notorious narcotics trafficker, and the wedding was like covered like you know. In some of the press out in Canada, it was covered like a royal, you know, like it was uh, Prince William and, and uh, Kate getting married. Uh, it, it was it was very ceremonial and a lot of big time crime lord shot callers were were at that wedding, and the the the, the authorities were were snapping photos, um, you know, like they were paparazzi outside of it. And uh, Marty Robert was was aligned with, according to sources, according to reporting, uh, was, was aligned with, with Chit Del Basso in this, in this palace coup to try to take out Leonardo Rizzuto. Um, only time will tell what, what the, you know, ramifications of this are, but in some ways it's not surprising, but whenever it, another murder in this, this long lasting biblical you know, mob feud where bodies are dropping at seemingly every 30 seconds, it's still when I when you see the report, it still kind of gives you a, a sense of shock, even though it shouldn't be shocking. Uh, Del Basso, again, was was really laying low, trying to avoid the, the fallout from his attempt on, on Rizzuto. He wasn't successful, but uh, the, the RCMP have raided Hells Angels 
uh, clubhouses as well as M Marty Robert's home residence in relation to both the um, the attempted hit on Leonardo Rizzuto and the uh, another you know organized crime case involving you know racketeering and and drug dealing within the biker community there, but. Uh, it should be interesting to see how this plays on both sides of the border. Chet Del Basso is just you know, one of these guys that you just was synonymous with, with the Rizzuto crime family for the last 25 years. Um, came up in the 90s as one of Vito Rizzuto's main you know, go-to strong arms. And he struck fear in, in everybody that was in his wake. Um, and I... It appeared that he 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 enjoyed it and uh, reveled in in the reputation that he created for himself. Uh, got busted in 2006 with a lot of the big time Rizzuto um, crime family leaders. Went and did a little bit of prison time. Came out and uh, was there when when that crime family was being destabilized. Um, you know him and Leonardo Rizzuto used to be very. They were, they were friends. I mean, there's about a five-year age difference. Phil Basso was, was 53. Um, well, I'm, actually, I'm not positive what the age difference is. But I know that Rizzuto, at one time, was being bodyguarded by Chip Del Basso, uh, back when Rizzuto was younger and uh, his dad wanted security for his sons. Chip Del Basso was one of the guys he trusted um, watching his son's the, the mob prince is back. Um, they obviously don't didn't see eye to eye uh, later on in, in their relationship, and as uh, things in, in the underworld in Montreal, throughout Canada, evolved uh, this uh, very tumultuous couple decades. And Del Basso, you know, took his shot, and uh, it obviously was a failure and, and, he, and it cost him his life. That was the um, penance that he had to pay. And, you know, that's the life these guys choose. So in that regard, um, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if you could get him in front of you right now at the gates, if he's there <laughs> or wherever. Uh, and he would say, I'm guessing he would say, hey, man, I, may, I, I, I took my best shot. And this is, this is the... Uh, you know, retribution goes along with the game. This is just par for the course. And you know, I said earlier in the show, you take a shot at the king, you better you better not miss. And, and Chip Del Basso missed, but uh, he's someone that will no doubt be remembered. There's a mythology around him, uh, much more so than a normal, just a guy that was muscle or enforcer. Maybe that was part of his desire to. Uh, to, to take the reins himself and and kill his way to the top. I and mean, he wouldn't have just been known as a, a knuckle dragger or a strong arm. He wasn't a guy that was looked at, um, at least early in his career, as a a super sharp-minded mob guy. He was valuable because he was a thug and he <laughs> was very good at it. Um, maybe that didn't sit well with him, but he's going to be remembered much more. I mean, obviously because of the way it ended, but... Um, more than that, he'll be, when people talk about him 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, uh, he'll be with more reverence probably than a normal mafia enforcer because this guy uh, had a, you know, was, was, there was a panache about him. He was more colorful than your average knuckle dragger. Um, some of those uh, wiretaps from, from the, 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 the case from the 2000s are just gold. Um, and the one, the, when he tells the guy he's going to drink through a straw, the guy can't recognize who he's, who's talking to him. And he's, they're kind of going back and forth, almost like the dozens and, um, breaking balls a little bit. And, and the guy asks Chet, you know, who the, who the fuck are you? And Chet says, you know, you you want to know who I am? I'm the guy that's going to put you in the hospital for a year and you'll be drinking through a straw because of me. Um, and that just goes down as one of the all time great sound bites. And uh, I think Chet will be somebody that, uh, again, it, it is talked about when you talk about the Rizzuto era 
um, more so than just how it ended. He'll be he'll be looked at as a uh, a major player in, in that in that empire, the Roman Empire, if you will, um, the last great Canadian mafia dynasty. So uh, check back this week for another full length episode of the OG podcast. We'll keep you updated with everything that's going on in Montreal, uh, whether it be the Rizzuto crime family war or Hell's Angels on both sides of the border. Um, for Jimmy Bucciolato, my co-host, for Benny Behind the Glass, Scott Bernstein out. Oh, 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 oh,